the Wii, Nintendo's most successful, popular, maybe even best console? A console used by hundreds of millions of people. Needless to say, the Wii is quite the console to cover in the classic iceberg format. With so many obscure and bizarre facts about the Wii, sprinkled in with the idea that this is the console that holds the majority of the world population's favorite video gaming memories, makes it that much more intriguing. For those who don't know what an iceberg chart is, it's literally just an iceberg with a chart overlaid on it. The higher the entry, the more surface level knowledge it is. And vice versa, the further down the chart we move, the more mysterious and unknown the entries become. So unknown that hell, I didn't even know some of these entries, and I consider myself a certified knower of all things Wii related. With that being said, make sure to strap in and get comfortable as we unpack and learn everything there is to know about Nintendo's magnum opus, the Wii. Nintendo Revolution Nintendo Revolution refers to the codename of Nintendo's 7th generation motion controlled powered console. This name was actually used in official material at one point. This was during E3 2005 where it was presented as Nintendo Revolution. Obviously the name didn't stick because eventually Nintendo opted to name it the now ever so popular name. Wii. References to the codename can actually be seen in the numbering scheme of the Wii and its peripherals, where the model number would be RVL- whatever model number it was. For example, the base launch 2006 Wii was model number RVL001. Mies. Do I really need to explain this? Mies are basically character avatars you can design and make your own, and were often used as profile icons for game saves and sometimes featured in the games themselves. A short but memorable list I can provide of where Mies have been used in the Wii are in Mario Kart Wii as playable characters and as game save license icons, Wii Sports as the players themselves, and you know, actually I'll just save you some time and say that they're the main focus of all Wii titled games. That means Wii Sports, Wii Play, Wii Fit, Wii Music, etc. Mies of course are iconic and dare I say, probably recognizable to everyone on earth. Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort Wii Sports is the Wii's best selling game and also the game that everyone who has owned a Wii has probably played because this game came packaged with almost all Wii models. This game featured the sports boxing, golfing, tennis, baseball, and bowling. This is also where the iconic Mii Matt got his start. As a whole, this game really kickstarted the popularity of Mii's. Wii Sports Resort is the sequel of Wii Sports released three years later and took place on the world-renowned Woohoo Island. It featured activities like sword play, wakeboarding, frisbee, archery, basketball, table tennis, golf, bowling, power cruising, canoeing, cycling, and various air sports. Nintendo Wi-Fi Connection plus Wii Connect 24 Nintendo Wi-Fi Connection was the name of the internet service that Nintendo provided during the Wii and DS era. Any game that was compatible with some form of internet connection would get the big old Nintendo Wi-Fi Connection stamp of approval right on the front cover of the box. This service unfortunately was discontinued 8 years later. I have tons of fond memories playing on Nintendo Wi-Fi Connection that I go more in depth in in my other videos, feel free to check them out after this one. Wii Connect 24 was a separate online service from Nintendo Wi-Fi Connection. Connection. It offered Wii consoles the opportunity to stay online 24-7. This service was used to power the Wii's online channels, such as the Wii message board, the forecast channel, and news channel, among others. This service was also unfortunately discontinued, however the plug was pulled a lot sooner than Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. Wii Connect 24 was shut down 7 years after its initial release. Mario Kart Wii Mario Kart Wii was the Wii's second best-selling game. The release of the game was paired with the release of the Wii Wheel accessory, and I'm convinced every Everyone has it. I mean, I have two for some reason, I literally don't know how. Anyway, the game is great, I love Mario Kart Wii, 10 out of 10, best game of all time. The game's so good that it still has quite a sizable community 14 years after its release. Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 are both quite popular games on the Wii. It's quite the Mario game, not as linear as the ones previously released. This game, if you couldn't guess, takes place in outer space. This game actually makes pretty good use of the Wii's motion controls. By shaking the remote, you can have Mario perform a spin, and by pointing the remote at the screen, you can have Mario collect star bits, which is this game's main form of collectibles. Not much else to say, it's literally just another great 3D Mario game that I and many others have very fond memories of playing. Wii Fit and Wii Fit Plus Wii Fit is not only another of the Wii's most popular games, 
but it also was the game that began the whole Exer Gaming fad. For the gamers in the crowd, that's a mix of the words exercise and gaming. The release of Wii Fit was paired with the release of the Wii Fit Balance Board. Wii Fit lets you play as your own me and offers exercises in the form of mini games. Wii Fit features four exercise categories, those being yoga, strength training, aerobics, and balance games. To Wii Fit's credit, it actually does a decent job of tracking weight and calories burned throughout the exercise mini games you play. Wii Fit Plus, as you can imagine, is simply the sequel to Wii Fit. This time around, Wii Fit Plus actually features five exercise categories, while also refreshing and adding new exercises to the previous categories from Wii Fit. The new category added was Training Plus, which features the iconic obstacle course minigame which I am using as background gameplay for this layer. Super Smash Bros. Brawl Super Smash Bros. Brawl is yet another extremely popular Wii game. It is the third installment in the Smash Bros. series and has a lot to live up to considering its predecessor was Super Smash Bros. Melee. The game overall was not very well liked by the competitive community, however, in my opinion, from a casual standpoint, I did enjoy the game, and so did many others. Sure, features like tripping are stupid and dumb and stupid, but overall, it's not a bad game. Solid Smash Bros. game for sure. We would like to play. The phrase we would like to play is in reference to a series of commercials Nintendo put out in 2006. The goal of the advertising campaign was to promote the Wii as a console for all ages and all people. This can obviously be seen in the commercials themselves. New Play Control New Play Control refers to a line of first party Nintendo GameCube games that were re-released on the Wii and made compatible with the Wii's motion control gimmick, as well as adding widescreen support and improved graphics. Games that were released include Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, Pikmin 1, Pikmin 2, Metroid Prime, Metroid Prime 2 Echoes, and Mario Power Tennis. The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess is just another one of those wildly popular Wii games. Nothing too special here other than the fact that it was a launch title for the system. I don't play Legend of Zelda games, but from what I've gathered online, the game was very well received. The Internet Channel The Internet Channel is a joke because no one in the right mind would actually fit an entire browser on the Wii- Oh. So yeah, this was the thing that happened. The only notable thing that the Internet Channel has ever done is making hacking the Wii easier. The Disc Channel The Wii Disc Channel is just the channel on the top left of the Wii menu. It allows you to play discs inserted into the console. I know, shocker. Nothing special, however, if the console does not recognize the disc you inserted, it does play this cool little animation. Wii Shop Channel The channel with the iconic and beloved jingle, I swear, browsing this channel was just an absolute blast. Just browsing all the new releases and virtual console provided entertainment without actually buying anything. I really hope this isn't just a me thing, because if it is, then it just really goes to show how easily amused I am by things. The Photo Channel The Wii Photo Channel was a Wii channel that allowed you to view and edit photos on the Wii, and that's about it. Wii Message Board Wii Message Board was a thing that let you receive messages from friends, family, and most importantly, Nintendo. Through sharing your Wii friend codes, you could send your friends messages. You know, the way Nintendo intended. The Wii Message Board was actually pretty cool because it would send images from other games you've played based on objectives you beat in the game. For example, every time the Special or Lightning Cup was completed in any CC class in Mario Kart Wii, you'd get this sick image sent to your Wii message board. WiiWare WiiWare was a service that allowed Wii users to install games that were specifically made with the Wii's features in mind. As you can imagine, these games were available for download on the Wii Shop channel. WiiWare games have a reputation of being… not the best? But there definitely are some diamonds in the rough, such as World of Goo, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, and Uno. The Homebrew Channel The Homebrew Channel is an unofficial modded Wii channel. The program is used to launch unofficial programs and games. Anyone who has modded the Wii ever has used this channel as it is so essential to the modding community. Banner Bomb Exploit Banner Bomb Exploit refers to the exploit used to run unofficial code on your console. Getting the exploit to work is essentially the first step in soft modding your Wii console. The exploit works by using a faulty banner from the Wii menu in order to crash and sign unofficial code to the console while in this crashed vulnerable state. During this process, you can install the aforementioned homebrew channel and boot me. That's all tier 1 has to offer. We can now move on to tier 2 where things become just a little bit more niche and interesting. Matt 
Matt is the boxing trainer from Wii Sports. He works as a competitor in tennis and baseball and is the champion in boxing. On top of all of this, he is also a meme. I don't know why, but he is. He's probably one of the most easily recognizable memes if I had to guess, but yeah, that's that's Matt. Me Parade. In the Me channel, by clicking this icon in the top right, you could access the coveted Me Parade. I promise it's not actually that special. In Me Parade, you could download memes that other users have sent to the Me Parade. Me Parade's main focus was to act as extra storage for memes. Knowing that other users could share their own Mii's from the Mii channel for other users to download to their console. Mii channel theme is not the Wii theme. This entry refers to the fact that many people refer to the iconic Mii channel theme as the Wii theme when in fact there are two very different songs. Everybody Votes channel. Everybody Votes was a channel that allowed for true democracy on the Wii for once. It was a channel where everybody votes on polls set up by either Nintendo or the community. It had this cool animation play every time a poll was closed and the results were shown where Mii's from the consoles that voted would run to the side that they voted for, and I think that was kinda sick and epic and cool. Check Me Out Check Me Out was a channel that allowed for players to share Mii's and enter them in various popularity contests. Players would then submit Mii's they made that fitted the specified category the best. From this channel, you could browse and find Mii's to add to your Mii channel. And fun fact, this was the first Wii channel to use the Wii message board. Nintendo would send messages based on the new contests they were starting. Nintendo Channel Nintendo Channel was basically just a program that allowed players to view information on Wii and Nintendo DS games. They could view trailers for specific games that they wanted to see, and they could even download demos to their Nintendo DS, which is pretty cool. Wii Music Wii Music is an incredibly mediocre piece of video gaming history that has been beat to death for years. I'll try to keep this entry concise. In case you didn't know, the creation of this game spawned this fever dream of an E3 presentation. You, you can you see for yourself the gameplay itself is lacking you don't actually play or make music you just shake the Wii mode and it makes sounds considering the gameplay focuses on playing music you'd think Nintendo would put more thought into this but I guess not I think the only reason this is an entry is because the game was so popular on the Wii becoming the 27th 27th most popular how does that doesn't even how how does what cottage on a private island on Woohoo Island, there's this island accessible in the Wii Sports Resort's Island Flyover Game Mode, and also in Pilot Wings Resort. Within the wacky and zany world of Woohoo Island, the cottage on this private island is said to be owned by the player itself. This is stated when you fly over the island and you collect the eye information thingy. Wii Mini The Wii Mini was a slightly smaller and budget revision of the Wii. The console debuted its release on December 7th, 2012 in Canada, oddly enough. This Wii model had multiple features stripped from it, such as internet capabilities, GameCube controller, and memory card ports, and actually the ability to play GameCube games as a whole was stripped. The Wii Mini also only supports composite cables, meaning no Wii to HDMI workaround, and the console can only output 480i image. The release of the console was bundled with a red Wiimote and nunchuck and a copy of Mario Kart Wii, all for the price of $99, which is an absolute steal thinking about it now. The Wii Mini was discontinued on November 13th, 2017, meaning Nintendo Switches were being sold and manufactured at the the same time that the Wii Mini was being manufactured and sold, which is kind of a crazy and funny concept to me. Dolphin Dolphin is the main go-to emulator for all Wii and GameCube emulation. This emulator is immaculate, I love it so much. Fun fact, the emulator's name actually comes from the development code name of the GameCube, which was also Dolphin. You could ask me, I have no clue why it was called Dolphin, honestly. Probably had something to do with Super Mario Sunshine if I had to guess. Reconnect 24 plus Wii Link Reconnect 24 and Wii Link are both modded programs for the Wii. They they provide support for many Wii channels that required the Wii Connect 24 services. Wii Connect 24 revives the Forecast Channel, News Channel, Everybody Votes, Nintendo Channel, Wii Mail, and Check Me Out Channel. Wii Link, on the other hand, revives discontinued Japanese and European exclusive channels and brings them over to the rest of the world. The channels that Wii Link revives includes Wii No Ma or Wii Room, the Dame Channel, the Today and Tomorrow Channel, and the Kirby TV Channel. These channels will be explained in more detail later down the iceberg. New Super Mario Bros. Wii Disc represents the SNES controller. New Super Mario Bros. Wii is another really popular game on the Wii. The disc being a reference to the SNES controller doesn't make much sense. I mean, look at them, there's zero similarities there. However, if you take the Super Famicom controller, which is just the Japanese SNES, you'll see that the color scheme of the characters matches up with the colors on the controller. Super Smash Bros. Brawl Fake Character Rumors This entry refers to the sheer amount of fake Super Smash Bros. Brawl character rumors coming out leading up to the release of Brawl. A lot of these rumors were made using the same dream slash fake Smash Bros roster formula that's existed since Melee. I remember looking through these a ton as a kid.
did, thinking it would be unbelievably cool if any of the characters that these people were saying were going to be in the game were actually going to be in the game. Mario Kart Wii Ultra Shortcuts Mario Kart Wii is often considered the most broken Mario Kart game out of all the 9 that have been released so far, or 10 if you want to count Tor. Of course, with it being the most broken, it is abundant with massive track skips on a variety of tracks. These track skips have been given the name Ultra Shortcuts by the community and they have become a big part of the game speedrunning wise. Just Dance 2022 Just Dance 2022 is one of the last slash most recent Wii games to have come out. One whole decade and a few years and people are still pumping out games for the Wii which is crazy to think about. Ironically enough, the game released for the Wii and the Switch but not the Wii U, I mean for obvious reasons. Retro City Rampage DX Plus and Shakedown Hawaii In case you were wondering what the latest game to physically release on the Wii is, well, look no further than Retro City Rampage DX Plus and Shakedown Hawaii, which both released on the same day, that day being Thursday, July 9th, 2020. Poofesher Poofesher is an incredibly influential gamer. Most of his content revolves around the Wii and Wii games, where he'll simply just play them in his videos with minimal editing, and it almost feels like his content is reminiscent of early 2010 gameplay videos, but specifically for the Wii. Regardless, his videos have garnered a lot of attention and has helped bring a lot of admiration to the Wii in modern times. Beef Boss Yet another iconic me is the hamburger me or quote beef boss as Professor has named it in his videos. This me has been floating around the internet for years. A tutorial video featuring how to make the hamburger me has amassed 8.9 million views which is honestly kind of funny. I mean, it got to the point where you'd see this me everywhere online on Mario Kart Wii back in 2010. This me would be on everyone's Wii, including mine. I guess it was just that influential. Accidents Yeah, this isn't just limited to Poofesher nowadays. Back in 2006 with people playing Wii Sports, a lot of people would have accidents. Whether it was not having the wrist strap on or having it on but not properly, you can find tons of compilations of these Wiimote smashing TV videos online. Of course, this all came down to user error and it wasn't actually Nintendo's fault at all. Jay Schlatt. Jay Schlatt is just another content creator whose content used to revolve around the Wii and its games and has helped the Wii have a resurgence in recent times. Nintendo Selects. Nintendo Selects was a label that Nintendo would slap onto their game boxes. This was done in order to promote best-selling video games. Nintendo Selects provided a discount by lowering the price of the normal non-Nintendo Selects retail releases. Tom Quinn Tom Quinn was the genius behind the Wii's motion control gimmick. Quinn had developed the signature motion control technology and was looking to bring it into games. He started by presenting his work to Microsoft and Sony, who both declined the pitch, then until finally Quinn pitched it to Nintendo, and of course, as you can imagine, they did end up taking the offer. Connect and PlayStation Move Connect and PlayStation 2 were Microsoft and Sony's poor attempts at replicating Nintendo's iconic motion control gimmick. I say poor because neither of their motion control peripherals really took off or replicated the Wii's success. Shovelware Shovelware is just a stab at Nintendo's poor quality control and third-party game releases on the Wii. Not exactly poor quality control, just the fact that the Wii was as popular of a console as it was. It attracted many third-party game developers looking to cash in on the vast user base of the Wii. The result? Classics like Margaret's Word Brain, Ultimate Duck Hunting, oh, and of course, my favorite Space Chimps. Anyway, that's all Tier 2 has to offer. Let's move on down to Tier 3. Weemfy. Remember Nintendo Wi-Fi connection from earlier and how it shut down? Well, introducing Weemfy. Weemfy is a modded revival service for the long gone Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. The service works with almost all Wi-Fi Connect capable Wii games. The most popular games played on Weemfy are Mario Kart Wii and that's about it. About 100 people play Mario Kart Wii daily on Weemfy, which is pretty insane considering that it's been almost 10 years since the official Nintendo service shut down. Project M and CTGP, or any popular Wii ROM hack. CTGP and Project them are both extremely popular ROM hacks of their respective games, Mario Kart Wii and Super Smash Bros. Brawl. CTGP is a ROM hack of Mario Kart Wii that adds over 200 custom tracks to Mario Kart Wii. Some of these tracks genuinely look better than Nintendo's own tracks. CTGP Revolution also features a ghost database where you can download and race ghosts on any custom track including regular tracks. This ROM hack also adds quality of life improvements to the game. As for Project M, on the other hand, the goal of Project M was aimed at fixing the speed of the gameplay to have it more in line with the series' previous and most competitive 
competitive entry, Super Smash Bros. Melee. On top of doing this, they did also add many quality of life improvements to the game. Mario Kart Channel The Mario Kart Channel was a downloadable Wii channel that provided extra content for Mario Kart Wii. This channel gave you access to special game modes, these were called tournaments and were reminiscent of Mario Kart DS's mission mode. Other features that the channel provide include ghost races, friend code registration, and lastly you could compare your time trial rankings to your friends, your region, and the rest of the world. Region Lines Region Lines refer to a feature in Mario Kart Wii's online worldwides, where you would race people from all over the world. In future Mario Kart entries, when you're within a certain distance of another player, you would be shown their name, their Mii, and their flag. Mario Kart Wii chooses to do something a little bit different. Sure, it would display your Mii and your name, but rather than displaying a flag, it would display a region line. Different colors would indicate different regions, a blue line indicates North and South America, a green line indicates Europe, a red line indicates Japan, and a yellow line indicates Australia and New Zealand. A white line is a little more obscure, but it indicates Taiwan, China, and Region ID 7, which is the region ID given to those who do not have a region configured on their Wii. And finally, a purple region line, which is probably the coolest looking region line, and this one belongs to South Korea. Honestly, I could have a whole video dedicated to explaining all the obscure oddities and facts about Mario Kart Wii's online functionality. Let me know if you guys would want to see that. Wii Family Edition The Wii Family Edition was a later revision of the Wii console released in North America on October 2011. It was designed to lay horizontally rather than vertically, and even has the Wii logo rotated for this function. Unfortunately, this model does not have support for GameCube games or accessories. Get Connected Video Channel The Get Connected Video Channel was a Wii channel that hosted a video on it demonstrating how you can connect your Wii console to the internet. This channel is also commonly referred to as the Wii Plus Internet Channel. The video this channel displays showcases all internet capable Wii channels and what they do. I've spent a lot of this video explaining Wii channels, but to be honest, whoever voiced this could have easily taken my job. There is a variant of this video for the DSi, and it is called the DSi Plus Internet Channel. DVD Support DVD Support refers to the Wii's DVD support, or lack of it. See, DVD support was a big selling point for a lot of game consoles. Being able to play games and watch high definition movies all in one place was revolutionary in the early 2000s. And for a console to not include it, it kind of seemed like a death wish in a sense considering Nintendo's competitors Sony and Microsoft included DVD support for their 7th generation consoles. Promotional video for Wario Land, Shake It. On YouTube in 2008, there was a promotional video uploaded for Nintendo's newest Wario Land game, Wario Land, Shake It, for the Wii. Back then, around the time that the video was uploaded, you YouTube gave this video one of their quirky exclusive little easter eggs. Every time something in game shook, the entire website would shake, creating this effect. Unfortunately, this does not work in modern YouTube. Time limits for channels Within early builds of the Wii's channels, hackers found a file called limitover.ash. Within this file were unused graphics for time limits on Wii channels. These were likely used for testing and debugging purposes as well as game demos. Netflix and YouTube channel This entry is kinda big as there is some history regarding Netflix being on the Wii. Starting with YouTube, yes, YouTube did in fact have its own dedicated channel on the Wii, however, the Wii is severely underpowered and it definitely showed in this channel. Video quality wasn't exactly its strong suit, nor were loading times. I'm saying this from personal experience because I used to watch YouTube on the Wii when the service was up. This specially made port of YouTube for the Wii was unfortunately shut down on June 28th, 2017. Now as for Netflix on the Wii, on January 2010, Nintendo partnered with Netflix. Similar to how Netflix started with renting movie DVDs and Blu-rays, the same was the case for the Wii. Netflix would ship out proprietary Wii discs that you could play movies on on the Wii. This was the case until October 2010 where a dedicated Wii channel would eventually be made for Netflix. In this channel, you could stream movies and shows through the channel rather than the proprietary disc that was sent to you. Nunchuck is inspired by the N64 controller. I mean, just look at it. There is some inspiration here. Even down to the button placements, the Nunchuck has buttons placed in the same area as the middle thingy part of the N64 controller. Wii wrist strap is shaped like the console. Again, just look at it. Wii wrist strap controversy. This isn't really that big of a controversy, however Nintendo did receive a few complaints when it came to Wii wrist straps breaking, I guess? I guess the complaints were loud enough for Nintendo to issue a replacement service for these Wiimote wrist straps. Kinda sounds like another controversy Nintendo may or may not be facing right now. Wii Zapper. The Wii Zapper was a gun shell peripheral? Peripheral is kinda pushing it because it's more of an accessory for the Wiimote. Anyway, it's reminiscent of the NES Zapper. This accessory is compatible with a few games, 
games. I mean, realistically, technically, it's compatible with all games on the Wii because it's literally just a plastic attachment. However, there were some games especially made for the attachment, such as Link's Crossbow Training, Call of Duty World at War, The Conduit, and a few more. Candles substituting Wii Sensor Bar. This is a reference to the classic solution of a broken Wii Sensor Bar. That's right, by using two candles spaced apart by about a meter, you could have yourself a makeshift Wii Sensor Bar. Granted, it's not exactly as accurate, but it gets the job done. This works because the Wii Sensor Bar is literally just a couple LEDs behind some translucent black plastic, and it's not some insane technology. Mii's and Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Mii's were unfortunately only ever included as player icons for online play in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Creator of Super Smash Bros. Masahiro Sakurai states that he initially planned for them to be included as playable characters, however, decided against it due to potential online bullying concerns, I guess? He then goes on to contradict these concerns by including them as characters in Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Mii's originated on the Famicom Disk System. Believe it or not, Mii's have been a concept since the Famicom Disk System. The Famicom Disk System, by the way, is an add-on for the Japanese NES that never made it overseas. They weren't exactly called Mii's at this time though, and this concept unfortunately never made it out of the walls of Nintendo HQ in Japan. Mii Speedruns. Yep, it's real speedruns for making Mii's do exist, and they're pretty popular. I believe some of the popularity of Mii speedrunning can be attributed to this failboat video and also this video. Wii Chess. It's just really bad. Powered by Goo. In the Japanese version of the news channel, when browsing the globe, a Powered by Goo logo would appear. After some quick research, I found out that Goo is some sort of news website for Japan, so if I had to guess, the Wii news channel information for Japanese Wii's was sourced from Goo or something like that. I don't know, there's very little information about Goo's inclusion in the Japanese Wii news channel. Hell Valley Sky Trees. In Super Mario Galaxy 2, there is a galaxy in World 5 called Shiverburn Galaxy. In Shiverburn Galaxy, you could go into first person and look up into the mountain skybox. Visible on top of these mountains are three figures deemed the Hell Valley Sky Trees. Not much is known about them or why they're in the game in the first place. The most likely explanation is that they are Kodama, which are Japanese tree spirits from Japanese folk for folk folklore. I don't care, I'm keeping that in. This theory really only comes down to their similarities in appearance. We Deleted You We Deleted You is a creepypasta series featuring a me named Etaled, which is the lead backwards if you couldn't tell. In the creepypasta, Etaled is a possessed employee at Nintendo of America named Henry who had passed away and was reborn in the form of Etaled. And with that, you made it to the bottom of tier 3. Before we continue with the rest of the iceberg, I'd just like to say, if you're enjoying the video and have been watching for this long, you might as well subscribe. I post a lot of Wii and Nintendo related video essay documentary type things that you might enjoy after watching this video. Also join my Discord, follow my Twitter, link in description. With that being said, on to tier 4. Golden Wii. Back in 2008, there were stories floating around on the internet pointing towards the Queen's enjoyment of the Wii, the Queen being Queen Elizabeth. Fast forward to 2009, where the game publishing company THQ catches wind of the story and as a result, in an upcoming marketing stunt for their new game, Neighborhood Games, they commissioned a Golden Wii to ship to the Queen of England. Unfortunately, for security reasons, the Queen cannot receive gifts from the public, meaning the Golden Wii was never received, which is a shame because I think the idea of Queen Elizabeth, the, the Queen of England, having her own own personal Wii is kinda hilarious. Wii Keyboard Yeah, so I didn't figure this out until today, but the Wii is compatible with keyboards. This feature is limited to only a few specific keyboards manufactured by Logitech in the early 2000s, the first one being the officially licensed Wii Keyboard, which was named the Logitech Cordless Keyboard for the Wii, and the second one being the Classic 200 Keyboard. Some other USB keyboards could work, but they're not guaranteed to be compatible. Not much is known about the Wii's keyboard capabilities other than the fact that it would be used in any aspect of the Wii where typing would be needed. So basically, that just brings it down to when you're surfing the interwebs on the Wii internet browser, in Animal Crossing City Folk when you message people locally in your town, and the keyboard that pops up when you name your me. I know, I know, very limited uses. Korean Wii. There's no limit to how much I can talk about Korean Wii consoles. They're so niche and unique that I could honestly make a standalone video for it. Anyway, what's so special about Korean Wiis? Well, prior to the Wiis release in Korea, the only games being sold there were locally manufactured 
manufactured PC games. Nintendo Korea already had a bit of a rocky start with the DS having so many other games pirated and put up for download on file sharing sites. This time around, Nintendo Korea implemented a special Korean key for all Korean Wiis as a final attempt to deter piracy. Nintendo's attempts unfortunately did not work out as these Korean consoles can still be modded just as well as any other Wii console from any other region, albeit with a couple more steps involved. Overall, the console just faced a ton of hardships being sold in Korea, from certain softwares not being compatible with the Korean Wii's altered OS to the limited selection of games released for the Wii in Korea. It just wasn't a good time overall. This unfortunately led to poor sales for Nintendo. The Art of Wii In 2007, Nintendo Canada partnered with Magic Pony and Udon Entertainment to release six different Wiis that were individually hand-painted by six different Canadian artists. If you were a Canadian resident, you were eligible to enter the raffle to win one of these six Wiis. Other than that, not much information was given on who the winners were or frankly where to even enter the supposed raffle. There's no official Wii or Nintendo site promoting this event and the domain theartofwii.nintendo.com, which was supposedly the website to enter the raffle, doesn't even lead anywhere. I even tried in the Wayback Machine and nothing. The few things that we do know is that the raffle ended on April 30th, 2007. Leading up to the raffle, only four consoles were showcased until a later date where two final consoles were revealed. And lastly, we know the specific Canadian artists who designed these consoles. And in the order that they were revealed in, illustrator Gary Taksali designed this one, artist Hoi and Tang designed this one, punk band Il Scarlet designed this one, Arnold Sang of Udon Entertainment made this one, and finally the final two that were revealed at a later date were designed by Dominic Hodginson and Cardinal Official with the help of Alistair Lee. Don't worry, I don't know any of these people either. However, that concludes the Art of Wii Mystery. Wii Sports Pack Wii Sports Pack references the many third-party plastic peripheral packs designed with Wii Sports in mind. These peripherals were just plastic that you slapped onto your Wii mode and it didn't really add any functionality beyond tricking yourself into feeling like you're really holding a tennis racket or a golf club. These next four entries are pretty similar so I'm just gonna sort of group them together. They all involved region-locked Wii channels. Anyway, moving on, Wii no Ma or Wii Room, the Demay channel, the Today and Tomorrow channel, and the Kirby TV channel. Wii no Ma or Wii Room as it is more commonly referred to in North America, was a Japanese exclusive Wii channel. The channel hosted family-oriented fun and achieved this by showing cartoons, holding brain training quizzes, and providing cooking recipes and educational shows all within the channel. The point of Wii Room was just to become a hub for all family fun, and it unfortunately didn't leave the walls of Japan. The Demay channel was a channel that allowed you to order food from your Wii. Users could order from restaurants in their area and it would be delivered straight to their house. A version of this channel does exist for the Wii U, but it is very obscure and it is also kinda sorta maybe lost media. The Today and Tomorrow channel. The Today and Tomorrow channel is a Wii channel that allowed users to view fortunes of their Mii across five different categories, those being love, work, study, communications, and money. As you can guess, these stats are all made up and didn't actually correlate to any real life scenarios. The Kirby TV channel was a downloadable European exclusive channel. Users could use this channel to watch episodes of the Kirby Right Back At You anime. Wii Startup Disc. If you ever unbox the Wii, you'll notice that it doesn't actually come with a Wii startup disc, or any disc for that matter, other than Wii Sports or any game that your Wii came packed in with. That being said, what exactly is a Wii startup disc? What did it contain? It was a disc that only Nintendo owned, and it would be used to fix a few early Wii units when the console first released. See, some launch day Wii models were not given the day one release patch that was meant to be given to all Wii consoles on the day of release. These consoles that did not receive the patch would be stuck on the pre-1.0 Wii menu, and as a result would not interact with games or channels until the so-called Wii startup disc was inserted and the 1.0 Wii menu was installed. If you had this issue with your system, you needed to call Nintendo and ship your system to them in order for them to fix the issue. Kokeshi Dolls Kokeshi Dolls are simple wooden Japanese dolls. They do not possess arms or legs and were crafted many years ago as children's toys. What significance does this bring to the Wii? If you couldn't guess between their similarities, the design of Miis are loosely based on Kokeshi Dolls and are actually cited as Nintendo's main form of inspiration when it came to developing Miis. Wii Vitality Sensor The Wii Vitality Sensor was a canned Wii peripheral announced in E3 2009. It was a finger attachment which would link to the Wiimote. The purpose of this peripheral
peripheral was to monitor bodily functions such as pulse, it was never known how this would play into any sort of game or Wii channel. Fake safety warnings. The Japanese Wii manual contained some pretty weird graphics. They indicated what to not do with your Wii. As a result, these pretty funny and kinda redundant real Japanese Wii manual warnings sparked a slew of fan-made fake safety warnings. These fake safety warnings were often covered in videos by many content creators and passed off as real Japanese Wii manual safety warnings, which wasn't too hard to believe considering these were some of the things Nintendo themselves was advertising you not to do with your Wii. Wii-itis. You gotta, you know, you gotta get your swing into it. When you're playing uh, boxing, you definitely gotta get into it. I think you down. I played the boxing before, and I think that it, I, I can see working up a sweat. Sweat like a sport, which is how doctors say you should treat it. British doctors are now warning of Wii-itis a Wii-related injury similar to tendonitis. Yeah, this is real. Doctors all over the world were diagnosing Wii-itis. Apparently, the immersion of Wii Sports is too much for some people, and it's equivalent to playing the actual sport it replicates. Wii-itis stems from an overuse of muscles while playing Nintendo Wii games. Wii Link and Reconnect 24 drama. Remember the two revival services mentioned earlier? Well, apparently there's some beef between them. This was brought to my attention in an email that a translator from Wii Link sent to me. It stated that Larson, the current lead for Reconnect 24, has been known to steal code from Wii Link's edition of the Nintendo channel. They have also been known to dox specific members of the Wii Link team. Larson is also the owner of Wii.Guide. The information on the site is very biased in Reconnect 24's favor. This drama seems to be pretty new and very much unresolved. I personally don't have a side, I'm simply reporting on this based on the information Wii Link has provided me. However, both of these services are running on donations and pure dedication to the Wii, so I really don't see the need to attack each other. There's no business takeover at stake, there's no money to be made or lost, quite frankly. Both services are great, one revives Japanese and European exclusive Wii channels, and the other revives the basic worldwide available Wii channels. They both complement each other in that aspect, regardless, that's the drama. Mario Party 8 Slur Controversy In Mario Party 8, on the board Shy Guys Perplex Express, in one of the special events that occur on the train, Magikoopa would say the following words, Magikoopa Magic, turn this train, and then the word, make this ticket tragic. That specific word is considered a slur for disabled people in the United Kingdom, and as a result, copies of Mario Party 8 in the UK were recalled, and the phrase was replaced to Magikoopa Magic, turn this train erratic. The slur still remains in versions of the game outside of the UK. Super Mario Mario Spikers. Super Mario Spikers was a cancelled volleyball slash wrestling game. The game would take on a similar formula to Super Mario Strikers and Super Mario Strikers Charge. Seeing as this game was cancelled, not much else was shared about the development of this game, apart from these model animations featuring popular Nintendo characters... uh wrestling, I guess? Connectivity with the DS. The Wii and the DS were released at around the same time, with the DS being released just a little bit earlier. It would make sense for the two consoles to have some sort of connectivity. There are tons of examples that could be used to showcase the Wii and DS's compatibility. So many examples that this topic could quite frankly receive its own video. The most popular examples of DS and Wii connectivity could be in Pokemon Battle Revolution, where if you had a Pokemon Diamond and Pearl save, you could use your Pokemon from said Diamond and Pearl save, and in Animal Crossing City Folk, if you had an Animal Crossing Wild World save, you could transfer your player character from Wild World to City Folk. Super Mario Galaxy DS Super Mario Galaxy DS is a fake trailer posing as a leak back in 2007 by Pablo Belmont, who is an artist and designer from Spain, and a name that you'll definitely be hearing further down the iceberg. He modeled, rigged, animated, textured, and edited this entire mock-up trailer on his own. His plan was to pass this video off as officially leaked Nintendo footage. He states that his trailer was made for a final assignment for his design study class. The guidelines of his final project consisted of creating a viral video that would need to garter over half a million views on YouTube, which is an absolutely insane task that you could, you know, help me reach if you, like, maybe hit the like button and commented and whatever. The whole thing was made only a couple months after the release of Super Mario Galaxy on the Wii, and to be honest, for the time, it's pretty damn believable. Of course, nowadays we're smart enough to realize that Super Mario Galaxy is too complex of a game to even think of porting to the DS, but with so many tiny details such as the planet from the Super Super Mario Galaxy E3 2006 showcase being present in the fake leak, it really just helped tie the whole project together and make it more believable. In case you were curious, Pablo Belmont ended up getting a B plus on the assignment. Super Mario Galaxy Pre-Order Call Back in 2007, GameStop ran a sort of promotion, I guess, where if you pre-ordered Super Mario Galaxy from GameStop, you would get a phone call from Mario himself, reminding you to come down to GameStop and pick up the game.
Pikmin's transferring data from your Wii. When transferring your Wii data to the virtual Wii on your Wii U, this silly little animation would play. Shout out Pikmin, honestly, they make the Wii to Wii U transfer so much more bearable. Remote Pointer Demo Obstacle Course The Wii Obstacle Course was a tech demo that was showcased in E3 2003. If it wasn't obvious in the name, the point of the demo was to outline the Wii's pointer controls. This demo is unfortunately lost in media, and if you're having flashbacks to a similar minigame concept on the Wii, it's because it essentially is. It's widely believed that this demo later became the Pose Me minigame and Wii Play. Mario Kart Wii Mission Mode Remember when Mario Kart Wii had Mission Mode just like Mario Kart DS? Probably not. What you're being reminded of is most likely the many online tournament challenges put out by Nintendo for the game from May 2008 to May 2014. However, Nintendo did actually plan on adding a fully-fledged Mission Mode to Mario Kart Wii. This was found by Mr. Bean 35000 vr on August 4th, 2017, where by scouring the game's files, he stumbled upon an unused menu for a planned Mission Mode. Due to similarities between Mario Kart Wii Online Challenges and Mario Kart DS Mission Mode, it's safe to assume that Mario Kart Wii Mission Mode was scrapped in favor for releasing online monthly challenges. The Blue Light Mystery I will admit I had some trouble finding information on this one, but by the looks of things, the Blue Light Mystery seems to be linked to the Wii's glowing disc slot. You may notice the disc slot glow when you insert a disc or receive a new message on the Wii message board. Nvidia Shield and IQ Player Nintendo and China have quite a weird history, starting out with IQ, which is a Chinese company that many manufactured and distributed various plug-and-play consoles, as well as handheld consoles that could play a Nintendo game. Of these IQ consoles released, there was the IQ Player, which was the equivalent to the N64, and that's it, at least for Nintendo home consoles in China. Noticeably, Nintendo had plans to release the Wii in China under the IQ name, but when it came for Nintendo to release, they opted to only sell in Hong Kong under their own name. Fast forward a decade from the Wii's release worldwide, and China finally gets their chance to experience the Wii. As a part of Nvidia's Tegra processor deal, with Nintendo, Wii games would be released in China through the Nvidia Shield and upscaled to 1080p for the first time. The games that went on to be released include Donkey Kong Country Returns, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, Punch-Out, Super Mario Galaxy, and The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. A port of Mario Kart Wii was announced, even with its own bug fixes and its own proprietary Chinese online servers, but it never released and no one knows why. With that, we have finally reached the bottom of Tier 4 and we can now explore the depths of Tier 5. Wii Wii. The Hemi Wii Wii is an absolute blessing that we didn't know we deserved. The Wii Wii is obviously an awful attempt at ripping off the Wii. It's one of those 101 crappy plug and play bootleg consoles, except this one boasts an astonishing 69 in one. Cheddar Cheese. The Wii in its design infancy went through many, many stages. One of these stages being the infamous Cheddar Cheese design, which sported four whole buttons. The buttons being the obvious star in the middle and these three small nubs. Nintendo at this point in development knew that they were going to be working with motion controls, yet it's unknown where the motion controls would have even worked in this model. Overall, it's just a really goofy concept of a controller that thankfully we never received. Nintendo on. Remember my goat Pablo Belmont from earlier? Well, he's back. This time not with a project for his class, but instead a project that he made for himself. I just want to quickly point out that Pablo Belmont was known for making a lot of Nintendo trailer hoax videos in the early 2000s. Nintendo on was the supposed next-gen console release after the GameCube. This console would feature virtual reality, because apparently that's something Nintendo needed to revisit at their lowest point, and somehow the console would feature the power of a ton of Super Mario 64 renders of Peach's Castle. Nintendo On was shown to have skins available, which is genuinely sick. Overall, the trailer was incredibly well designed for something made before the Wii even released. Gyropod Yet another Wii remote prototype. Nicknamed the Gyropod, this prototype in particular demonstrates a turning point in Nintendo's development of the Wii. You could tell where the idea of the Wii mode and the nunchuck combo was starting to form. I'm gonna be honest though, this controller looks like it'd snap in a heartbeat. Glee Wii The Glee Wii was a special Wii that was signed by the cast of Glee. Don't ask me what Glee is, I just know it was featured in that one episode of The Office. This signed Wii was then bundled with the Glee Karaoke Revolution, Wii Sports, and Wii Sports Resort. The Wii was going to be a GameCube add-on. In 2006, Nintendo filed a patent. This patent showed the GameCube having some sort of sensor being plugged into one of the GameCube controller ports, and it shows a diagram of a remote that 
that looks extremely similar to the Wiimote, Starlight Fun Centers. Starlight Fun Centers are a series of game units funded by Starlight Children's Foundation in partnership with Nintendo. These units are brought to hospitals and are intended for kids to use as a distraction from the outside world. Versions of these Starlight Fun Centers aren't just limited to Wiis, there are SNES, N64, GameCube, Wii U, and even Switch variants. I don't know what it is about the name Starlight Fun Centers, maybe it might be the name coupled with the context it's used for, but it provides sort of a liminal feel without any visuals. I don't know if you guys get what I mean, let me know in the comments if you get what I mean, I guess. We me. We Me is the title of a silly little short video that was uploaded to YouTube on June 21st, 2008. It features this guy's older brother making a me of his younger brother, except the me he makes literally becomes his younger brother. This video kinda encapsulated the whimsical and warm nature of spending time with your family on the Wii. I can't believe I left them in the script. I'm not gonna turn this video into a why We Me is a submersive masterpiece, although Shafrila should definitely get on that, I'm just saying. Photo Channel 1.1 Restoration Program Self-explanatory, this channel was made for Japanese Wii users to restore the 1.0 version of the Wii Photo Channel if they really wanted to. I don't know the differences between the 1.0 and 1.1 Japanese photo channels, but I mean, I guess the option was there to downgrade. Doctor Who Controller Yeah, so I made a mistake when uh, designing the iceberg image and accidentally typed Doctor Who channel instead of controller, so I'm super sorry if you were expecting the Doctor Who channel. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't a Doctor Who Wii channel, uh, but anyway, this is the Doctor Who controller, and I, I know, it, it's hideous, like, how do you even hold this thing? TV no Tomo G Guide TV no Tomo G blah 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 for the Wii is a Japanese exclusive channel that allowed you to explore a TV guide. In this channel, you could rate programs and send alerts 30 minutes before a program starts to your email or text, all from the Wii. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword Save Data Update Channel You wanna guess what this channel does? This channel is simply used to update The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword to patch a bug that would make it impossible to complete the game. This is the only Wii channel that does this sort of game update type thing, so that's pretty cool. Leaked Skyward Sword Demo In 2011, a dump of a gaming convention demo of Skyward Sword leaked online. The build of the demo was dated August 2010, and that's really all that happened. No one knows who or how the ROM was dumped. Human in the Check Me Out channel. In the Check Me Out channel's unused files, there seems to be two textures that looks like they'd correspond to some sort of human, I guess? No models were attached to these textures, and to be honest, they were likely used as placeholder textures for some sort of testing purposes. Totaka's song in Wii Sports and Wii Music Totaka's song is a song that is snuck in in practically every game that composer Kazumi Totaka has worked on for Nintendo. Notably, Wii Sports and Wii Music do not feature this melody anywhere. Here's what Totaka's song sounds like, by the way. Mi used to catch a criminal. Back in 2009, Japanese police of the Kanagawa prefecture used a Mi to identify the criminal of a hit and run incident. And in case you were wondering, it's unknown if the culprit was caught or not. Pilot Wings Wii. Remember Pilot Wing 64? Probably not. Well, in between the release of Pilot Wing 64 for the N64 and Pilot Wings Resort for the 3DS, there were plans to make a standalone Pilot Wings game for the Wii, and not just have it be a one off mini game in Wii Sports Resort. This game, of course, never came out. Piston Hondo reading a Sailor Moon manga. On Punch-Out for the Wii, in between rounds, Piston Hondo can be seen reading a book. Once taking control of the game's camera with mods, it can be seen that he's not reading just any book, he's actually reading Sailor Moon manga. This was most likely used as a placeholder texture, and Nintendo never intended for anyone to see this. However, once the publishers of the Sailor Moon manga got a hold of the news, they sued Nintendo for $2 million and supposedly won the case. You Draw Game Tablet You Draw Game Tablet is a gaming tablet released by THQ for the Wii in 2010. It comes with a pressure-sensitive stylus, which gets this allows users to draw. I wouldn't have gotten that from the you draw in the title, just saying. Overall, the tablet didn't get used in many games, only being featured in UDraw Studio and seven other games, and the most notable ones being SpongeBob, Squiggle Pants, and the Penguins of Madagascar Dr. Blowhole Returns again. They're not notable in any way, I just like SpongeBob and the one penguin from Madagascar. Moving on from tier 5, you're gonna want to strap in because things are gonna get super unknown and obscure. V09 
The V09 was a prototype controller for the GameCube's development units. This controller is also speculated to have been a possible prototype for the Wiimote, which if it is true would make it the earliest prototype available for the Wiimote. It was developed sometime between 1999 and 2001. NNGC NNGC, or Nintendo Next Gen Game Console, was an early codename for the Wii before they used the signature Revolution or quote unquote RVL codename. Sport V Sport V is another knockoff of the Wii, similar in concept to the Hammy Wii Wii. Sport V consoles were reportedly sold for 1,280 yuan, which equates to about 180 USD, which I find extremely expensive for something that looks like this. Wii Phone Yeah, so you know those types of joke videos that would try to predict next-gen gaming consoles? They typically came out in the mid-2000s and boasted the classic Windows Movie Maker style. Well, there was one of these made specifically about 15 years ago by Video Game AF that has garnered over 14 million views which featured the coveted Wii Phone, as well as the DS closed and open, and Nintendo on funny enough, among some other pretty funny Nintendo console concepts. RVTR Reader Also known as the RVLR Reader was a version of the Wii that was used for debugging purposes. There are two versions, the normal one and the E3 2006 variant, which is all black despite the Wii launching with the base white model. Other than that, not much more is known about the E3 2006 version. What is known about the RVTR Reader as a whole is that that it can only boot games from discs and it does not feature any internal storage for game discs. RVTH Reader, also known as the RVLH Reader, was a Wii development kit which would load up titles from its internal storage. I mean, as you can tell, there's no disk drive. There's no special variants of this kit. One other development product to note is the NDEV, which was the main development system for the Wii. Set Personal Data Channel, the Set Personal Data Channel is a channel hidden from Wii owners that is only present on Japanese Wii ISOs. The channel simply features the options home address, pin, notes, erase all information, and three others that have not been translated. Bulletin Board Channel Also known as the What's New Channel, was a scrapped Wii channel that would have provided users with news and updates. My theory is that this channel either later became the Wii Message Board in development, or the two shared too many similarities and Nintendo opted to scrap the Bulletin Board Channel. Love Film Instant Channel Love Film Instant is a Japanese streaming service. It merged with Amazon Video in 2014 and that's all we know. The channel wasn't scrapped or anything, it released to what I guess was pretty poor reception because it's not nearly as known as the Netflix or YouTube Wii channels. Beta Wii Menu A build of the Wii system menu released on September 24th, 2006 exists and holds some pretty big differences between the final Wii menu. For starters, this system menu version was given the name Menu 1.0 RC1. Oddities between the final and early versions include different sound effects, beta mees, empty unselected channels were highlighted, some animations aren't very polished such as the Wii message board showing up briefly when entering Wii options. Overall, this version of the system menu is pretty rough and unfinished. Cancelled Bob Ross Game Bob Ross The Joy of Painting was a planned game for the DS and Wii. Not much is known outside of the name of the game and the fact that it was one of the first confirmed games for the Wii. What I find kind of funny is that the cancellation of this game was brought upon in a message in a Yahoo group chat which stated that AGFRAG would no longer be involved with the development of the game. Through the research I conducted, I guess the cancellation of the game caused some sort of uproar, sparking many people to create posts covering the game's cancellation, some stating that the game was supposedly going to save the Wii, as if the console was dying in the first place. Rumors of the game being back in development did spread, but no physical game came out and, as a result, it is kind of lost media. Cartoon Network Backlot Party Cartoon Network Backlot Party That's a mouthful. Was a cancelled crossover game that was first announced in March 2014 and was planned to be released in 2015 for the Wii and 3DS. It was mentioned as one of two games that were being developed, the other game being Adventure Time. The game, unsurprisingly, would be a party-esque minigame collection. This game was pretty far into development considering it had a list of characters and minigames laid out. Unfortunately, like the cancelled Bob Ross game, this too is also lost media. Wii Relax Wii Relax is a cancelled Wii exclusive game that would have used the aforementioned Wii Vitality sensor. The trademark for this game was filed but never released. The game would have been developed by Nintendo and most likely would have followed suit with the other Wii titled games, perhaps featuring Miis and things of that nature. IRL Me Pet Grooming Parlor Speaking of Miis, did you know that in Sudbury, Ontario, there is a pet grooming parlor named Auntie Sherry and Friends Grooming Parlor? The sign for this parlor features what I could imagine being Auntie Sherry and her friends Miis. This obviously is not official or licensed whatsoever but it's still cool to see. I tried looking through Google reviews for this place and not one mentioned the parlor signed, which is kind of disappointing. 
We drug bust. In March 2009, drug investigators had raided a Florida home where they had found drugs, weapons, and a Nintendo Wii where officers began to play Wii Sports bowling on it. The only reason this story is known at all is because the security camera in the house picked up footage of the police playing the game during the drug bust, and I think that's like kind of hilarious. Like, come on, man. I don't know. The the con like the contrast between those two things is just it's funny. Congratulations, you made it to the end of this awfully long iceberg. I'll keep things quick. If you enjoyed, obviously like, subscribe, do all of that. I don't regularly post icebergs, but I do post many Nintendo related documentary type things that you may enjoy. I want to give a special shout out to Mari, the creator of the ultimate Wii and Wii U iceberg. I essentially took some of the Wii elements from their iceberg and made it my own by sprinkling some entries I felt needed to be covered. Yeah, sorry this video took like 3 months to make, but I think you can tell considering the length of the video. Regardless, thank you for watching and stay tuned. I'm never making a video this long again.